Hello guys and welcome to the retro future. I don't have an intro yet, but if I did, it probably wouldn't be this. If you've been on my channel for a few weeks, you will know that I have done videos on both of these Walkmans in front of you. The one on the right hand side is the Sony TPS-L2. It was the first Walkman that was made. However, this is the second revision. The first one didn't actually say Walkman on it. And then the one on the left hand side is the Walkman WM3. This one is a slightly newer revision of the TPS-L2 and allows you to play metal tapes. What was before this, you might wonder? Well, in the late 80s, Akio Morita made an autobiography called Made in Japan. And this is basically about Sony, how it came about, and the kind of history of him and the Walkman. On page 79, he starts to talk about how the Walkman came about. Up here, he starts to talk about in the late kind of 70s, all you really had was just these ginormous big kind of cassette players and cassette recorders really that just people would lug around on their shoulders and it just was really heavy and pretty unpractical. And then uh, he started talking about down here, they had the Pressman and that's what I'm gonna show you in today's video. They stripped out the recording circuit and the speaker and replaced them with a stereo amplifier. I outlined the other details I wanted, with in, which included lightweight headphones that turned out to be one of the most difficult parts of the Walkman project. And if you have watched Guardians of the Galaxy, you'll know those kind of those uh, really iconic orange headphones. That was also one of the first things uh, that came out at around this time as well. He then goes on to talk about how him and his friend listened to it in the car, and they wanted to add a, a hotline button so that they could talk to each other. And uh, it's a really, really interesting book. I definitely recommend checking it out. So this right here is the Sony TCM600B. Now this really was the first of its kind. Uh, well, actually, I'll tell you a little bit of a lie. Before this was the TCM100, but it's basically identical. I think it's just had minor improvements. I've also got a TCM100 coming down. Um, so I'm gonna be doing a Let's Refurb on that. This one was pretty much okay. It just needed replacement belts, which is pretty much uh, what most of these things need. Before we have a little look at the uh, kind of side by side between what they uh, got rid of and what they improved on, let's just have a little look at how this thing works. So on the top of the device, you have a ginormous big red record button. There's a there's a pause button here. There's a kind of fast forward-ish button here, but you can kind of still listen to the audio as opposed to the fast forward here, uh, where it just kind of cuts it out and just speeds up loads. You have a microphone. There's a stop and eject, play, rewind, fast forward. There's a volume for the mono speaker and mono output on the headphones. This thing does not output in stereo. If you're looking for a Walkman, this is not the one to get. You've got DC 3 volt in, speaker on the back, batteries in the bottom here, and that's pretty much your lot. You also have a little um, lanyard loop, which mine is upside down at the moment, I need to replace that. And you also have a tape counter, which is something that you saw quite a lot on um, old recorders i guess they kind of got rid of them on the later revisions but uh it's just so you can see how long you've been recording for incidentally this is the tape recorder from the 13 reasons why netflix series uh it's pretty cool i don't think it's really worth a video but it's really nice in my collection and i like it a lot so in here i have awesome mix volume 2 can't play a lot of it because i'll get copyright claimed oh of course, I managed to pick it at the end of a song. Um, I'll also demonstrate the recording um, function in this a little bit later on. The main reason I wanted to make a video on this is just because absolutely no one has good videos on this um, on YouTube at all. There's a couple and they're mostly in Chinese. There's no talking, they're just kind of demonstrating it. So I really wanted to show you guys this. I know it's not kind of gaming related, but it's something that I find really, really cool. So um, that's why I wanted to show you. So on the inside of the cassette recorder, and this is something that you won't find in the TPS-L2, there's a really small mechanism at the back, and basically what that does is it recognizes if there is a notch cut out on the top, or if there isn't. And basically the difference is, on the bottom I have a pre-recorded tape, and on the top there is a uh, recordable tape. And uh, you can see the notch there is basically a protect mechanism from recording over your tapes. And um, in the later revisions of the metal tapes, they had little holes in the middle as well, and devices would recognize if it's a metal tape or not. So before we do the comparison, I just wanted to show you guys the um, actual recording function, because I'm sure not a lot of you are gonna stay for very long in this video, because it's not something you're gonna be interested in, but um, it's just a really, really cool piece of history, and this is the retro future, and I just wanted to show you guys. Right, so um, our devices recognize that this is a, um, 
This is a recordable one because you can see because the button is now pressing down. If you don't have something in there, it won't press down. So what we're gonna do is hit record. You'll notice that this little battery indicator will blink whenever I start talking. If I stop talking, it will stay still and that is it kind of recognizing that there is a recording going on. You'll notice that this little battery indicator will blink whenever I start talking. If I stop talking, it will stay still and that is it kind of recognizing that there is a recording going on. So what I'm gonna do is just plug that straight into the camera and then you guys can get an idea for the audio. So I hope from this you get a good idea of how the audio sounds. It's definitely not something that's super high quality, but of course back in the day, back in the late 70s when this came out, it was pretty good. So you might have noticed from that that there was like a whirring sound. That is actually just the uh, cassette recording. There is a option to plug a microphone in um, and I imagine quite a lot of people probably would have done that. Plus they would have had their microphones from their older systems and just plug them in. Hello. This is a brief test to see what this sounds like with my Rode VideoMic Pro. I'm not entirely sure if it's going to sound okay but that is the whole point and the nature of testing. And you also will have noticed that it only came out in your left ear. That is because this thing outputs, as I said earlier, in mono, and it sounds exactly the same when you plug headphones in. So when people were listening to this, um, to listen to audio like Aki, Akio Morita, he wouldn't have been listening to the nicest of sound. So that's why they bought out the TPS L2. Now you'll notice that there's some pretty nice uh, similarities in this. That's why I bought it because it just looks so beautiful in my collection um, and also because I really wanted to see what was inside it compared to this. And basically it's exactly the same, just a ginormous speaker on the back and then a load of extra kind of mechanical things for the record as well. Um, it looks a little bit smaller but it's more or less the same height. It's the exact same thickness and um, yeah, pretty much looks identical. The only main difference is this piece on the side is a little bit longer. Um, they added this nice volume um, on the side and they really wanted to show you guys that it was stereo because this is pointless otherwise. Um, so they added in there kind of left and right. I don't know maybe if there was, um, people had an abundance of mono headphones so maybe you could just like, you know, turn that one down and then listen to it like that. But um, I'm not entirely sure because I think this thing actually shipped with their stereo headphones that I mentioned before in the book. The window's the same, the arrow's the same, the Walkman didn't exist and this wasn't a Walkman, this was a cassette corder. They sacked off the, uh, well, the, they hadn't yet put the Sony logo up here. This is uh, indented and this is kind of protruded and extruded, shall I say. On the top there's the hotline button that I was talking about. This thing is basically just like a momentary kind of uh, switch. You hold it down, it activates the microphone on the side and uh, then you can speak to people. This microphone, incidentally, is not the same as this. This one sounds far, far better. And then on the WM3, which we're not really gonna be looking at too much in this video, it was more for just kind of a show the, pur the purpose of the start. Um, this microphone is much more improved and the button stays down as well. So you can really have a nice chat with your friend about how good the music sounds. They've kept the power indicator, it's pretty much in the same space. They've got two headphone out so you can listen to your friends. On the side, you still have the play, stop, fast forward, rewind. On the back, you've got the pretty much exactly the same metal um, battery cover. The design is very, very similar. On the side, they've gotten rid of the lanyard because um, it came in a nice leather carrying case and they've got a high and low tone. And that's more or less it. Inside, it's pretty much the, the same. You've still got the little um, silver sticker. The mechanism slightly improved on this one, but that is pretty much it. I hope you guys have found this relatively interesting. I don't know if this, this is gonna do very well, but I just thought for the sake of history, I would definitely uh, you know, go on here and show you guys how cool these things really are. Get them now before they get really expensive um, going into the future. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Let me know what you think in the description below, in the description, in the comments, and uh, I'll catch you in the next video. Pe oh, no, don't wanna do it that way. Peace.